Yeah, g'day, Bush Camping Tools here. Well, as you can see, this is from Bush Camping Tools uh, Kitchen, I'm going to tell you now. Because of the uh, COVID-19, we're a bit restricted on travel. But So what I'm going to talk about this morning is, it's not a knife review, because as you know, I only review products out in the field and not from kitchen tabletops, etc. But uh, what I wanted to talk about, and it's a subject which comes up quite often, is about stainless steels and what do people understand by that. So I've got a couple of uh, representative knives, if you like, here. They really mean nothing. I'm just using it for examples. So what do I mean, mean by stainless steel? Well, the three knives I've got here, I've got this one, okay? I've got this one, and I've got this one, okay? Uh, the first two, of course, are, are from Extremoratio, and this one's from Linda uh, in Germany, a hunting knife from Linda in Germany. Uh, they're all stainless steel, what are known as stainless steel, but there's we have two different steels there. We've got N690 stainless here on these two, and this one is Japanese Hitachi ATS-34 stainless. So what do I mean by stainless? Well, most people think when they hear the word stainless steel that it does not rust. Okay, that's not true. Uh, well, it's not exactly true. Maybe I can illustrate it here with this knife. Uh... This knife from Extremoratio has some parts on it which are not the same as the blade, the same material, but they are stainless steel, and that's the guard and the pommel. Uh, you can't, you have to take my word for it, the pommel's covered by this camo tape here, but the, the guard is made from L316 stainless steel. What is L316 stainless steel? Well, it is a stainless steel which is uh, resists uh, the forces of corrosion, so if we were to... Um, expose this blade and the pommel to say the same forces of corrosion let's say it's salt water this would definitely resist it more uh, than the blade itself here uh, this knife has uh, no other parts on it other than N690 with the exception of the stainless steel fixing bolt of the handle and this one the only other part other than the the blade made out of steel is the rivet in the tang there Okay, so what makes something stainless? Well, we probably know that the uh, addition of the element chromium makes something stainless, and, um, and certainly chromium plays a big role in an alloy resisting uh, the forces of oxidation. So, in order for that to happen, chromium has to be in what's known as a solid solution uh, within the metal alloy, that means that the chromium has to be available to actually oxidize, to form components with oxygen on the surface of the steel. Mm -hmm. So, does all the chromium in a stainless steel, especially a knife blade, uh, is it all available for the formation uh, of chromium oxides, which is on the atomic level, uh, which will resist uh, corrosion on the outside of the steel blade? And the answer to that is no. Uh, depending on uh, the heat treatment, how hard the knife is, uh, will determine how much chromium is actually tied up to in what's known as chromium carbides. Now, chromium carbides are quite hard. Formation of chromium carbides, they form hard, um, if you like, uh, regions within a knife. But that chromium, if it's in the form of chromium carbide, cannot aid corrosion in corrosion resistance. So these two knives here are hardened to uh, 58 Rockwell. That's a uh, Rockwell of the Rockwell C uh, designation. And 58 is uh, about a general kind of fairly hard, high hardness. And, and the higher we go, the in general, the less resistance to corrosion. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. This other knife from Linda, ATS-34, it's hardened to 60. And, and um, that's kind of an optimum hardness for this particular alloy. Now, other things that will aid in a stainless steel resisting corrosion is the surface treatment and what the surface looks like. So the smoother the surface, and by smooth I'm talking about on an atomic level, like a milling, 
Well, no, let's go back. Let's say it on a milling level. If you could have it perfectly smooth on an atomic level, um, for example, a stainless steel and N690, if one surface was like milled and the other surface was mirror polished on an atomic level for the same steel and the same uh, heat treatment, uh, the one that was had the mirror polish and, and was perfectly smooth would resist corrosion more than the one that wasn't, okay? Uh, but that's in practical terms, that's not, that's not possible. The other thing you can see here is I've got a knife which is coated. This is coated with what's uh, called a, a, a military specification blackening process on the steel. And uh, to set the record straight here, this really adds zero protection uh, in terms of corrosion. All this does is really reduce reflection so I can wave this around in the light here. And from a military perspective, or let's say a perspective of not wanting to be seen or giving away your position, uh, this is this non-reflective surface is of more use. But if you're, um, you know, into hiking and camping, etc., and you're not into creeping around the wilderness, and you don't want to be, uh, not worried about being detected, then this, uh, you know, really is a bit of a superfluous uh, thing. So I've said uh, that the higher the hardness, the less chromium is available for uh, the prevention of of rusting. So let's ask ourselves the question, does 58 Rockwell, for example, uh, on N690, uh, does it actually rust? Will you get rusting? Well, I can tell you right now that uh, this knife is fairly old, this fulcrum S of mine, I actually cut the guard off, so it is a genuine fulcrum S. Some of you might be saying, well, it, it can't be genuine, it has an upper guard, I cut that off, ground it off. Uh, it, it, it has... It is showing some signs of surface rusting just underneath this grip here, and some of my other extremas are as well too. I use them a lot, um, and you know sometimes I may be a bit careless with the treatment. Hence, they say you know easily maintain. You know you've got to be able to take the handle off. If the handle's not over molded, you must be able to take it off. If it gets in salt water or dirty fresh water or highly oxygenated fresh water, such as you know rapidly flowing uh, creeks and rivers, the water contains lots of oxygen, uh, it's able to react with the surface of the steel. So if you're continually getting your knife wet, it would be a good idea to take the handle off to clean it. Handles like this, which are over molded on there, uh, a quick dunking, the water is not going to get into here. In general, it's not really going to get in there. Um, and so, um, you know, and this handle on here is a no-nonsense handle because this is a hunting knife, it's going to get covered in blood and guts, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, probably wet, you're washing your hands, you know, in between various things, um, it's a working knife. Okay, so these will get some rust on them. Components like this on here should not rust up at all, even in salt water. Now, you know, some of you may be saying, well, you know, this is, why make the guard in this case out of L316, uh, why not make it all out of N690, it's absolutely not necessary. Is L316 a garbage steel for a knife component like this? Absolutely not. Uh, for example, when it's treated correctly, it can develop sufficient hardness for the, for the specified task. I have rappel racks, which are made out of L316. It's cold bent, uh, so it's work hardened, essentially. And listen, you know, I bet my life on that stuff, uh, rappelling off cliffs etc. I'm still here. Uh, those devices have not broken. It's uh, just L316 stainless steel. So it's more than good enough. The fact too that they make it up here on that too, this will deform. If this was made out of N690 and made to the same hardness as the blade, I'm going to be bashing away on that possibly in the event that I did do that. It, uh, it, it By deforming L316, it's slightly softer of course, uh, it, it's going to absorb some of that energy and not transmit it to the tang so much with less chance of damaging the tang. On the other hand, uh, on this scabbard, this is the um, scabbard of that uh, fulcrum there. This part here is made from N690 because it has to be hardened to be able to cut stainless, uh, cut rather uh, barbed wire and hardened wire properly. So it's hardened. And by the way, uh, I have a neodymium magnet here. N690 uh, is, is highly magnetic, absolutely highly magnetic. So is ATS 
34. But um, L316 is, is barely magnetic at all. So there are non-magnetic and magnetic stainless steels. There are uh, non-magnetic and magnetic L316 stainless steels. So this is clearly a uh, non-magnetic non L316 on there. The same goes for up here on the pommel. As for the fixing bolts, they uh, exhibit little uh, you know, attraction to the magnet and the same with this one on here too, Okay, as I would expect. So I've only uh, really just touched on what does it mean by stainless steel, what do we understand by stainless steel. I've only spoken about two different stainless steels here. I haven't spoken about any others. Uh, but I will briefly mention D2 because it often comes up, is D2 a stainless steel? Strictly speaking, if you put on a metallurgist hat, the answer to that is no. However, if you really put on the hat of an outdoors person or even, um, you know, exposing that knife to the outdoor treatment, uh, which you would encounter hiking, camping, hunting, etc., D2 is more than stainless enough. Uh, if you leave it in a bucket of salt water overnight, sure, you're going to see some rusting on it. But the surface treatment, how the knife is finished, will determine, will also aid a lot in its resistance to uh, corrosion. Not the mill spec, though. I'm talking about how smooth the surface is. So a mirror polished D2 surface will really aid in resisting uh, the effects of corrosion. So I believe that uh, all outdoor knife, uh, stainless steel uh, knives rather, they're not entirely 100% maintenance free. They're just not, not unless your knife happens to be made out of some really corrosion resistant titanium or L316, which is not suitable really for a, for a um, outdoor knife. It may be okay uh, in some hardened state for a dive knife, but they get banged up all the time. My dive knives are, I have one which is, really sharp but one which is always blunt because it's banging into rocks and cutting all sorts of garbage underwater um, you know so it's certainly not made out of L316 or it's not made out of N690 actually my uh, dive knife some of our 44C uh, stainless steel so I want you to bear in mind when you're thinking about going for some uh, knife which is hardened at 62 and above or whatever, 62, 63, 61, 2, 3, um, that hardness is not necessarily, you know, the, the be all end all of what you should be aiming for. There's got to be compromises. Note here too on this high, this is pretty high rock wall, this HRC 60 on this hunting knife from Linda. It's got a, you know, it's not mirror smooth, but it's a pretty smooth finish on there. There's no coincidence. They've given this kind of finish on there, they've not given it a stone wash finish on there, it's a pretty smooth finish on this knife, and if I was to polish it up the surface there even more, it would resist corrosion even more, this is a high hardness knife because, you know, if you, when you're hunting, you know, using a knife in hunting, you don't want to be constantly, I know some people do like constantly sharpening their knives in between, you know, gutting, skidding, chopping meat off the bone, a bit of butchering, uh, I, I'm not really into that, I want a knife that I can you know, I don't have to be constantly sharpening all the time. That means I've got to bring all this sharpening stuff with me. Uh, and, and if your kind of hunting requires that you're away from, some distance away from a vehicle, and you've got to hike in everything on, with everything on your back, like your bow hunting, etc., uh, I don't want to carry all that stuff with me. Okay, so I like the fact that this is it, uh, HRC 60. Other knives like these, these need to be feel maintainable uh, in a hurry because they're directed at military personnel um, and so HR, um, HRC 58 is more than hard enough and I'm going to tell you HRC 58 is hard you know I used a carborundum wheel and a carborundum cutter to cut that top of the guard before I ground it down off there underwater of course because I didn't want to change the treatment of it heat treatment of the steel the temper and, and it took some time to do you know it's pretty hard so make no mistake about it in a practical sense HRC 58 is is more than hard enough. Anything above that is, you know, uh, really reducing or increasing rather your time, increasing the distance between having to sharpen that knife, all things being equal. But it also means if you let your knife go entirely, totally blunt, it's going to take longer to um, get.
get an edge back on it. Anyway, I digress there. So my take home message there is the higher the hardness, the less chromium is available, all things being equal for reacting with oxygen on a molecular level on the surface of the steel, the uh, greater the chance your knife will suffer uh, from corrosion. And I have an ATS-34 knife, a very old Strider. Uh, it's a real work knife and it does show some signs of corrosion. It also so shows signs of surface pitting as well on there. Uh, it's old, it gets used, you know, that's going to happen. So, yeah, uh, that's all I really had to say at this, and I just thought, you know, maybe I'll do a, a part two to this follow-up uh, later on. Okay, Bush Camping Tools here. Thanks for watching. Staying indoors uh, with the COVID-19 or trying to reduce, you know, our uh, impact on others in the environment. Okay.